Hello friends, my name is Kendra Winchester and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about some nonfiction books that I read over the last couple months and uh, there have been several. I was on a nonfiction kick and I don't know why, uh, but I enjoyed all of these so I'm excited to tell you about them. Uh, but first I have to tell you about my possibly my favorite out of all of these. Very close, and that is Good Talk by Mira Jacob. And this is a graphic memoir. Her style is really interesting, and I really enjoyed what she did with this. And I was flying back from Washington, D.C. from this festival, and I was well, let's just say I wasn't doing well, and so I'm trying to hobble around an airport with a cane, and so I sit down, and I'm really, like, stressed, and I pull out this memoir, and I start reading, and I'm enthralled. And I could not believe the pacing that she achieved in this. I feel like pacing oftentimes is really difficult with graphic uh, novels because you, the person reading it isn't just reading the text, they're also looking at all of the illustrations and what the person has done with it, but uh, this memoir was phenomenal. It's one of my favorite memoirs, if not my favorite memoir, that I have read all year. It's so good. And I was just enthralled. Later I'll talk about this, but I read her novel, which came out a few years ago, called The Sleepwalker's Guide to Dancing, and the same precision of pacing is in that novel, which is like 500 pages. So she's obviously very, very skilled, and I'm so excited for this book. We're actually going to talk to her on the Reading Room podcast. We're recording like tomorrow, uh, but I am so excited to talk to her about this because she's so skilled, and I have no words. It's so, so good. This is a memoir, like I've said, I should probably tell you about it, besides gushing about it, um, but this is a memoir about Mira Jacobs' life. And she, her husband is white, and so she is uh, Indian. And so she, you know, growing up, there was always a lot of colorism in her family, and people talk about how dark she is and make her say she's ugly because she has darker skin than a lot of her family. And so she faces that growing up, and then she marries a white Jewish guy and they have a child together and so you have this back and forth of her childhood where she's experiencing all these things and then also uh, in the future when she's trying to explain Donald Trump to her young son and that you know his Jewish grandparents voted for Trump and what that was like and she really dissects what is going on right now in our political climate in such a precise and way that almost feels gentle. It's so like, this is the thing. I don't know how to describe it. Like she's just so good at what she does. And this is a book I feel like I could hand to people and be like, read this book, just go forth and read and, and you would understand more about the world around you because that's what she's done. She's helped readers understand more about the world around them. And I, I love it. I love it so much. I just could gush about this book forever. So definitely check out that interview. It'll go up in November at, at some time. I don't know. Just, it's so good. It's so good, guys. So a book that I was very surprised to see longlisted by the National Book Award is Burn the Place uh, by Elena Reagan. I listened to this book. She doesn't narrate it. I'll put the narrator's name down below. So this book is about Reagan's young life growing up in, I believe she grew up in Michigan, and hunting mushrooms with her dad. That's part of the cover. Um, but she came from a kind of like a dysfunctional kind of family and quickly became addicted to drugs and alcohol. And it's like her journey becoming sober, also discovering that she is queer. And she had a very interesting journey to kind of discovering and embracing her sexuality, which she denied for so long, and how she would just jump around from person to person, almost like trying to prove to herself that she wasn't gay. And it's just a very interesting memoir of her trying to come to terms with her life and, you know, face her demons, as it were. And this memoir is just a really deep look at that I really think it's one of the better chef memoirs that I've read and definitely going to be on the list of food books, but it has been long listed for the National Book Award. And, you know, Reagan, I believe, has a degree in writing. Was that her undergrad? I wasn't quite sure. She changed her major a lot in the memoirs. So I wasn't sure which one she stuck with and finished, but she definitely had a lot of writing classes because this is a pretty beautiful memoir. So uh, definitely go check this out. This is out from Midway and you will see it in various places now. So congratulations to Reagan for being long listed for the National Book Award. And yeah, I love books about food. You know this. 
So a book that I read while traveling around is Emily Bernard's Black is the Body Stories from My Grandmother's Time, My Mother's Time, and Mine. Is that from Knopf? And this one is really interesting because Emily Bernard is a, a teacher of um, like African American studies and looks at you know racial dynamics in society and so but her husband is I believe white yes he's white and he also teaches similar on similar topics and so she talks about being married to a white man who teaches these things and the dynamics of that she also talks about being stabbed and what life is like when you've been stabbed and how scars can often looking at a scar can trigger trauma and I found that very interesting as someone who has had you know an abundance of random surgeries and scars and things like I remember each surgery by the scars that I have and so when she talked about how scars connect to your past and how memories are connected to different parts of your body and how you cannot remove those scars they are permanently there it's, a, it's very much like a just symbol of the trauma that has been on your psyche and just different things like that and it was very well thought out you can tell like she is definitely an academic writer but what i found most interesting about this essay collection is her essay on how she and her husband adopted two twin daughters from ethiopia and what it was like for them to live with a white father also her relationship with adoption and i found that very interesting because i don't think we have enough books about adoption, both from the parents who are adopting the child and also the child who was adopted. We just don't have enough books on that and there are so many different feelings on the topic. And so hearing Emily Bernard's take on adopting her two girls and what it's like raising these two girls is just so interesting. Uh, so I found those two, the one about scars, let's say on scars and how that affects, uh, you know, your mind and experiencing those traumatic things and the essay on adoption my favorite um, essays in this collection to me those two essays make it worth it but it's really short so i don't think that anyone would have any problems getting through this book but i just find her mind very fascinating i guess overall so i'm not sure how if that makes this a successful essay collection but she definitely has several s successful essays in the collection i just don't think all of them are quite up to the same standard as the other ones. So uh, still check this out if you are interested in it. I think there's a lot to be said about this and if even if you don't you know pick up this book or buy it or whatever you can check it out from the library and read you know cherry pick and read these essays in whatever way you would like because that's the joy I think of this kind of essay collection. You can jump in and out wherever you want. So there you go. Um, another book that I read is one that the horse lover and me really enjoyed. Uh, I don't think a lot of people know this, but I used to work um, with foals, and so I would train and show foals and yearlings um, for uh, Tennessee walkers, and so I grew up with horses until I started getting very sick, and so I couldn't do that anymore. Uh, I became allergic to horses and hay, which on top of everything else, so that was just weird very specific. Uh, but so when I read this book, it really just reminded me a lot of that. And so this is about like a 19-year-old girl going and racing this endurance race in Mongolia. It's supposed to be the world's toughest horse race. She's very underprepared and somehow wins. And we know this, like going into the book, you know she wins. She's the youngest person and the first woman to ever win the race. And this isn't like some ancient race that's been going on forever. This was created by like a British man it, like you know six five six years ago before she ran the race so I mean it has been going that long but I found this very interesting because she's a very privileged person from the UK like she her aunt is like this very professional endurance writer and her family has a lot of money and is very privileged she ends up going to Stanford and stuff like this and so this could have gone very badly because a lot of times people raised with that amount of privilege don't really recognize that but I feel like she does a good job of not underselling her own achievements but also acknowledging the privilege from which she came and she also acknowledges that she was very underprepared and sh this shouldn't have happened basically she wrote this entire thing and was like really I shouldn't have won but I did and you know I tried really hard to win and I fought really hard for it but I really shouldn't have because I wasn't prepared and that tension between those two things was really interesting. The audiobook I just flew through I found this very fascinating to read about the ponies in particular that they would ride and if you see photos of the ponies they're like tiny they're tiny little ponies and it was sort of just this fascinating look at what it's like to ride across Mongolia and the things that she learned from it and how doing this most random 
adventure uh, really taught her a lot and really kind of solidified her as she was adrift in between high school and university. So I really enjoyed this. I'm not sure how much a lot of other horse people might. I know a lot of people who love horses are very particular about their memoirs about horses and different things, but I think she did a great job of finding a balance of not trying to be too know-it-all-y. A lot of times a lot of horse books try to teach people about horses as they're doing this and I think she does a great job of telling you what you need to know without like info dumping about a lot of stuff and she teaches you a little bit of Mongolia and the stuff that she's learned but I, I felt like overall she did a good job with this memoir so definitely pick this up if you haven't already. Also Nicole Caputo wins the day for this amazing uh, cover design. This is so cool. So the last book I read, I read in print, um, and it took me um, about a month because I would read a few pages at a time. Um, but this is Godland by Lens Lens. This is a story of faith, loss, and renewal in Middle America. And what's very interesting, being a person from a rural location, whenever you leave that rural location, most people want to throw all of rural America as if it's the same. But you look at America, America is huge. Like, it is a big country. And there's a lot of us out there and we're all very different. So I grew up in Appalachian, Ohio, uh, which is a totally different region from where Liz Lenz grew up. And she grew up in the Midwest and the Midwest is, is an animal unto itself. Uh, but she looks at churches in the Midwest and the culture of churches in the Midwest and the history of faith in that particular area. And then once the 2016 election hits, she leaves her church and her husband because she just cannot handle the culture anymore. And so she talks about that in this book, in this series of essays, and she really analyzes in a very journalistic way uh, these this church culture and what it means. And I found all of them so really informative. She asked so many important questions about how much is actually faith-based, like these actions of these certain group of people, how much is actually faith-based and how much is actually just their Midwestern culture. And she kind of like tries to find where the two like, you know, divide, where, where these two things overlap and what do they say is faith-based but is actually culture-based and all of these questions that I have had over the last several years. And so I really appreciated her look at this and she also you know gives us this little timeline this like through like thread through the whole book is her own relationship and her marriage and her relationship with her church and what that ended up looking like in the end it reminded me a lot of some other essays i've read like rachel held ovens if you like rachel held ovens you'll love this probably um she you know comes to her own conclusions in the end but i find the questions that she's asking really important and so I found this very fascinating. There's another book coming out. I think it's called something like This Is My Body. I hauled it recently um, from, uh, I got it picked up at Siba. So I'm going to read that soon. That's my next gym book. I read this at the gym. Like that's how I motivate myself to go and do my physical therapy is to go and take the book and read it. It's fun times. <laughs> So anyway, I really enjoyed this. If you have a lot of questions about the Midwest or you're wondering what on earth is happening to religious culture in America, like most of us are, uh, then definitely go pick this up because I feel like she just is so interesting. It's so interesting. I find her as a person very interesting as well. I really find her Twitter fascinating. So I will link some things down below if you want to go learn more about Liz Lenz and the work that she does. Uh, but yeah, so those are the nonfiction books that I read in August and September. I've been really loving nonfiction and right now I'm reading more nonfiction. I've discovered that I really like essay collections at night when I go to bed because my mind is always running everywhere. Since I work from home, there's really a lack of divide. My work and, you know, personal life because they're the same thing and so I just sit there and I listen to essays and so I've read so many nonfiction books uh, which has really been a delight honestly but I'm kind of out of them I'm listening I like two left I need to read for the award and then I have to just go fiction all the way so we'll see what happens wish me luck all right that's it for me thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time for another wrap-up of more books I mean can you believe it all right talk to you later